Hey, it's Rupert. Lately I've been thinking of buying an entire cask of scotch whiskey for investment purposes. So this video details my decision making process and whether I should or shouldn't buy an entire cask of scotch whiskey. So let's get down to it! The cost to purchase a private cask from the Borders Distillery is normally £1,995 sterling. However, because I work there, I would pay only £1,837. That's an employee discount of £158, or 7.9%. This price includes the physical cask itself, the 200 liters of spirit which it will be filled with, storage in a bonded warehouse for up to 10 years, insurance, and bottling costs. I've never thought of investing in whiskey before. I usually like collecting things like fine bone china, mugs, vintage items, antiques, books, and thrift store treasures. Since this is unfamiliar territory for me, the first thing I did was ask the good people of Reddit. I received quite a lot of feedback and so let me read you a selection of comments. Okay, selling the cast straight away makes things easier, especially if the distillery buys it back from you. That said, you're relying on the cask remaining quality and the market being strong. No idea what either will be in 10 years. If you're comfortable losing the money, go for it. Prices will be dropping in 10 years. Poor investment, a fun hobby. If ever I have enough money for it, I want to buy a cask or two of Aaron and bottle it with my face on the label and give it out as gifts and eventually dump an absurd amount of it on my heirs. But as an investment, it's not going to be profitable unless you have a plan and connections to essentially start a micro indie bottling business. Nay nay and thrice nay. Look up Nant Whiskey Cask Scandal. That's a super extreme example. There are plenty of good reasons to buy a cask from a new distillery that doesn't claim to offer a clearly bullshit buyback scheme. However, you obviously shouldn't pour your savings account into volatile assets when the market is starting to see a possible downturn in the next few years. I learned a couple of things from reading the comment section. Number one, Buying an entire cask of scotch whiskey might not be as safe an investment as I initially thought it was. And number two, there are a lot of negative Nancys on the scotch subreddit. Just kidding. After I consulted Reddit, the next thing I did was look up the Nant whiskey casks which were previously mentioned. The Nant Distillery was a boutique whiskey distillery in Australia who had a very popular whiskey cask investment scheme. Almost 900 investors purchased barrels of whiskey after production began at Nant's distillery north of Hobart in 2008. The barrels cost up to $14,000 each and would be stored in a bonded warehouse on the property until the whiskey had matured a process that was expected to take four years, according to the Nant investment offer. When the distillery started to falter, a publicly listed company, Australian Whiskey Holdings, announced a takeover. When doing a stock take as part of their due diligence, it was revealed that a staggering 700 barrels had never been filled with whiskey. The audit also found an unknown number of barrels were either missing or had been secretly decanted bottled, and sold to the public without the knowledge of investors. Needless to say, the takeover did not proceed and investors lost all the money they had invested in the cask whiskey scheme. Well, that's an unfortunate story. And as far as it applies to my situation, I'm not thinking of pouring my entire life savings into whiskey casks. I'm only thinking of buying one. I've worked at the distillery for over a year now. I've met all the people that work there, the founders, so I feel like I can confidently say that this is not some sort of scam. Which leads me to my next big question. Can I really make a profit selling this whiskey cask in the future? Hmm. This is where the risk comes in. 
In 10 years, I don't know if the scotch in my cask will taste good. This is a new distillery, so new that they don't legally have any scotch ready yet. I have nothing to use as a reference guide, and so your guess is as good as mine as to whether it will be any good. And if in 10 years it ends up that my cask of whiskey doesn't taste very good, that can also decrease the resale value of my cask. Also, what happens if the cask starts leaking and nobody notices, and there's significantly less liquid in there than I expect there to be? What happens then? Luckily, I remember that my initial cost included insurance, so I'll be covered in the event of unlucky occurrences like this. I wanted to see what the average rate of return on investment is for a whiskey cask. Based on a few articles I read, I came up with 7% annual rate of return on investment in a whiskey cask for the cost of bottling and duties. That means if I pay 1,837 pounds per cask and there's a 7% compound annual rate of return, that means in 10 years, this cask will be worth about 3,613 pounds. If I were to sell the cask outright, I also wouldn't need to pay the duties and the value added tax to have it bottled. A 7% annual rate of return is okay. It's not terribly exciting considering my money will be tied up for the next 10 years. Again, this percentage could be higher if in 10 years time the distillery has established a reputable brand and their product is in demand. Or it could be lower if the whiskey in my cask just doesn't taste very good. Then I wondered, what if I don't sell the cask outright and I try to bottle it and then sell it? What is the cost of a bottle of my scotch whiskey and how many bottles will I get from the cask? It's time to math it out. First, let's calculate the number of bottles I can expect. This cask should hold approximately 200 liters of new make spirit at 63.5% alcohol. If every year there's a 2% loss in liquid to evaporation, also known as the angel share, then after 10 years, we should have 163 liters in the cask. Let's assume only pure alcohol is evaporating and being lost. So after 10 years, the cask should be 51.9% alcohol. We're left with a cask with 163 liters at 51.9% alcohol. We'll assume we're bottling our whiskey at 46% alcohol, which means we have 184 liters at this strength. A single bottle is usually 700 milliliters, so that means we should have around 263 bottles. Great, so my initial cost was 1,837 pounds. This includes insurance, warehousing, and bottling. Documentation charges are 130 pounds. The current duty rate is 28 pounds and 74p per liter of pure alcohol. We have 85 liters of pure alcohol. So times 28 pounds and 74 P, that's 2,442 pounds and 90 P, which gives us a subtotal of 4,409 pounds and 90 P. The value added tax is at 20% on both the duty and the original purchase price. That comes to 881 pounds and 98 P. That means our total costs are 5,291 pounds and 88 P. If we take this number and divide it by our 263 bottles, that will mean each bottle will cost 20 pounds and 12 pence. So if I want to bottle it and sell it, I would need to price each bottle at at least 20 pounds and 12 P and sell all 263 bottles to break even. A lot can happen in 10 years, so what did I decide to do? Well, for investment purposes, there are shorter term investments with higher rates of return. 
So if we're talking about buying a whiskey cask purely for investment purposes, I probably wouldn't do it. With that said, in the end I decided yes, I am going to be buying a whiskey cask. And my reasons for doing so aren't entirely objective. I think what really influenced my decision is the fact that I work at the distillery. And I think it'll be cool to hold a bottle of scotch in my hand in 10 years time and say, hey, this bottle of scotch here, I made it way back when. And that's a pretty cool thing to be able to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more distilling and distillery videos. This is Brewbird sending good vibes your way. I'll see you next time. Thank you.